Hello, my name is Ioannis Dizoglu. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about visual basics and events that we can actually add onto our program. Before we get started, what I would like you to do, I would like you to have a similar object that I have on my form. So you need to go to File, New, Select Project. Make sure the Windows Form app is selected and make sure the Visual Basics selected. Name your application appropriately. I've named mine as uh, my VB events app. Once you've done this, I would like you to add 10 labels onto your project. So go to the toolbox, scroll down to the letter L for label, and by clicking and dragging, add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 labels. Each label needs to be named appropriately. So the first label needs to be named as LBL message. Then the second label needs to be named as LBL time. The third LBL current time. The next one LBL mouse hover. LBL mouse leaf. LBL key down. LBL key press. LBL time tick. LBL enter key, LBL text changed. Now, it's not important how you're going to name them. As long as you name them in a way that you will be able to call them when you start adding the code, that's fine. You might want to pause this video until you catch up. The other object we need to add is a text box. Now, name the text box as txt my text box. I've added a button. So BT and submit, and I've added for three panels. The first panel, I've changed the background color to red by going to the web options, select the red color. I also name it appropriately. So for the name, I call it PNL red. I did the same with the next panel. I call it PNL orange, and I've changed the color to orange for the web tab orange and the third panel I've changed the color from the web to green and I changed the name to PNL green okay now I have my objects in place you can pause the video until you have the same objects in place yourself once you've done this you can come back and we can actually continue pause the video now Okay, let's get started with the code now. What we need to do, we need to click to select our text box. We need to go to the properties and click on the events, the lighting icon. And the first event we need to add is the mouse hover event. So scroll up or down until you found the mouse hover event. Double click it. So we added the private sub there now. The, on mouse hover. On mouse hover, I want to call the label this label here by default by the way by default I need to make sure that let's go back to the properties I need to make sure that all these labels are selected I'm gonna go to the properties make sure you change the value for visible to false so by default all the labels if I run the, pro the project all the labels will be invisible by default so what I need to do on mouse hover, I want the LBL mouse hover to be dot visible to be set to true. So I'm making my LBL mouse hover visible basically. Okay, so by default it's invisible, I make it visible. Let's test our first event if it's working. Let's click start. On mouse hover, yes, the mouse hover event is triggered. Stop it. With the text box selected, I'm going to the events again, and the next event is mouse leave. So I'm going to scroll up or down until I found the mouse leave event, and I'm going to double click it. I'm going to go back to my code, and on mouse leave, I'm just going to put LBL mouse leave dot visible equals true. So I make sure that the mouse leave label is going to become visible. So if I run the project, 
if I hover over with my mouse, my mouse hover event is triggered. If I move on leave, mouse leave, the mouse leave event is triggered. Okay, so I've triggered two different events now, so far. I'm going to go back to my design view, and I need to trigger now the key down event. So I'm going to select my text box, and on key down event, I'm going to double click here. I'm going to go back to my code. And I'm going to make sure I find the key down event. So my key down event, I'm I want to make visible the LDL key down. Dot visible equals true. I'm going to start on mouse hover. I can see the event. On mouse leave, I can see the event. And if I type something, I can see the event or key down as well. Right. The next event I need to trigger is on key press. Now key press and key down is a similar event. So again with the text box selected, I'm going to scroll up, on key press, I'm going to double click here. And I'm going to type LDL key press. I'm going to double click here, key press dot visible equals true. I'm going to Press the start key now to test it again. So mouse hover or mouse leave. And if I type something or keep down and or keep press, like I said before, a similar event is triggered. The next event we need to trigger is the time tick event. Now for the time tick event, I forgot to mention before, we need to click and drag a timer over to your project. So scroll down to the letter T for timer. And make sure you put a timer onto your form and you will be able to see the timer below here if we go to the properties make sure the timer this the interval is set to 1000 1000 is equivalent to one second so let's go back here now so we need to trigger let's close this we need to trigger now the next event which is time tick event for the time tick event i need to select my timer I need to click on the little lighting bulb and I need to double click here. And on time tick event, I want the LBL time tick dot visible equals true. Now, by default, the timer, let's go back to the properties, the enable settings is equals to false, which means that the timer is not, is not ticking by default. So, in order for me to actually start the timer and in order for the tick event to take place I need to make make sure that on hover if I go back here I go mouse hover I'm going to start the timer so I will say timer 1 now timer 1 is the name of my timer so if I go here that's the name of my timer timer 1 dot enable equals true now, what I could also do, I could comment this out by using a single quote there, and I could type timer one dot start. So timer one dot start or timer one dot enable equals true is the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the timer one as a comments. I'm just going to leave this as timer one dot start. So when I hover over with my mouse, the timer will start. And because the timer will start, the label will be visible. Label, timer, time tick. This label here. Let's try it. On mouse hover, on mouse move. And because of mouse hover, I trigger the timer. The timer is started now. So I can see the label there. And if I press the key, the key press and get key down is activated as well. The next event I need to activate is the enter key event now the enter key event it's going to be i could put the enter key event on the down on the key down or, or the key press now i'm just going to put on the key down uh, so if i go back to the code i'm going to find the key down event and here what i need to do i need to type if e dot key oops if dot key code is equals to keys dot enter 
if that's true then I want the LBL enter key dot visible equals to two so I've created an if statement here to check if the key down is the enter key and if that's true the enter key label would be visible lbl enter key would be visible let's run it right on mouse hover i'm triggering the timer also i'm triggering the mouse hover event on mouse leave i trigger the mouse leave event on key down i'm triggering the key down and key press and if i press the enter key i'm triggering the enter key event so that's how we activating all these events that we have here now the final event we need to trigger is text change if I select uh, my text my text box and go to the events and scroll right down to the bottom text change if I double click here it will take me to the text change private soup now what I need to do LBL text change dot visible equals true if I press the start button and I type something, the text change event is enabled. The next thing we need to do is create the timer here, a countdown. I'm going to make sure that the timer is going to count down for me. And if it reaches to a particular number, I'm going to set up the traffic lights. And if it's set to a particular number, I can actually make all these labels uh, change the visibility to false. So to make them invisible again after X amount of seconds. How do I do this? Let's stop the project. Right. I need to go to the time tick event. So if we scroll all point down until we found the time tick event. Let's keep a couple of lines here. Now outside the time tick event, the private soup for the time tick event, I need to create a variable dim my time assign the integer data type here what we'll say is my time is equals to my time minus one now what I could do I could say my time equals my time plus one this will add the value uh, on every tick so in every second so every tick will take place in every second because this is the interval I've set so every second, basically, it's going to add a value onto my time variable. What I need to do here is I'm going to say my label. Let's, I can't remember what name I gave to this label here. Let's figure it out. Okay, current time. So I will say LBL, current time. That's LBL, current time, dot text is equals to my time dot to string so I'm passing the value of my time to this uh, label so if I press start now and hover over my mouse where I'm starting the time now as you can see it's adding one value on every tick which is in every second now what I want to do, I want to create a little countdown instead of actually adding numbers here. So I will say minus one. Now, because I said minus one, I want when the form loads, so I'm going to double click my form here. When my form loads, I'm going to say my time equals, uh, let's say 10. So my time is equals to 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, and then I will say, uh, LBL current time dot text is equals to my time dot to string so basically the same code we added here so as soon as my form loads even though I have here the number 0 it will add the number 10 for me okay let's let's start the project Okay, on form load, form load, my time is equal to 10. I can see that. 
also my label current time dot text equals my time dot to string so if I hover over move my mouse and I'm going to trigger my uh, timer my timer is triggered so it's going downwards now and once you hit the zero it's going to be minus one minus two minus three etc etc I don't want this to happen I want to put a little stop there okay how do I do that I'm going to go to the every tick here and I'm going to create an if statement on my if statement I'm going to create an if statement I will say if open brackets close brackets will say if uh, lbl current time dot text if this value if this is less than zero we'll say my time equals my time plus 10 so I'm gonna add another 10 seconds if this value so it's gonna start counting down again if the label is less than zero then it's gonna add another 10 numbers so I'm going to press that I'm going to trigger the timer event so it's count down now start it and once it reaches to zero you should go back to 10 okay it went back to 10 after minus 1 so this is because I will say I need to say here less than or equals to zero so if I try again and I trigger the timer okay zero and then nine etc etc okay now what I need to do here I need to put some uh, some more code here so I will say so my timer is triggered and I will say all the labels that I've added, so LBL, i start with the first label, so LBL, uh, enter key, dot visible, equals false, so I'm going to make sure that this label is equals false, LBL, the next one is key down, dot visible, equals false, uh, the next one is LBL, key press, dot visible, equals false, uh, the next one is LBL uh, mouse hover dot visible equals false LBL the next one is mouse leave so basically I'm make, making sure that once is the countdown taking place and for for the first time all the visible labels will go back to, invis to be invisible again so LBL uh, mouse leave dot visible equals false Oops. LBL the next one is uh, mouse well, I've got mouse hover mouse leave let's copy that control C control B dot so LBL mouse leave the next one is LBL text changed dot visible equals false LBL time tick dot visible equals false uh, let's see how many we have one two three four five six seven so if I go here one two three four five six seven that's correct okay let's try again so I'm going to activate all my events include the enter key so I have all my labels visible now now once the timer reaches to zero that's it all my labels now are invisible now because the timer is start ticking again the time the timer tick event um, is activated again so what I need to do I need to go back to the if statement also I need to say timer one dot stop so I need to stop stop the time when it reaches to 10 to, sorry to 0 then I want the timer to stop so if I press start I'm triggering this event 
and the enter key so I have to trigger all the events so what reads is to zero it stops now the timer stops so the time set to zero here so what I need to do here for the timer I will say LBL uh, timer sorry current time dot text equals uh, 10 so I'm gonna basically reset the timer to 10 so I'm triggering the time and let's trigger all the events so all the events have been triggered now and once it reaches to 0 it should go back to 10 and everything is invisible until I hover over with my mouse again and start triggering all the events okay the next thing we need to do now we have control of the time uh, is make follow the same process and make these panels visible and invisible every X amount of seconds so let's stop this I'm gonna scroll down uh, uh, after the if statement that I have of my, on my time ticker I'm gonna put another if statement here and I will say if let's copy this line here because this is the while we're checking, we are checking the label current time. So I will say if label current time, let's press enter to add the end if line here. If current time now is, I'm going to say, is greater than or equals to uh, zero, and I'm going to copy, highlight, and copy this. So copy this line here, and I'm going to put and and paste it again uh, and is less than or equals to 5 okay if that's true I want the PNL green dot visible equals true PNL red dot visible equals false and PNL orange dot visible equals false so I'm making sure that the other two panels are invisible and the panel green is visible I'm gonna remove the extra spaces here I'm gonna highlight this if statement copy and I'm gonna paste it two more times okay here we'll say if is greater than 5 or equals to 5 and less than or equals to 7 then I want this to be false I want the red to be false and I want the orange to be true so I'm making the orange visible for two seconds and if this is greater than or equals to 7 and this is less than or equals to 10 then I want the green to be false and the red to be true so for five seconds the green light will be on for two seconds the orange will be on and for three seconds the red will be on let's try it okay let's go back here let's make sure that this label these panels are set to invisible uh, visible equals false oops let's make sure that we turn them to invisible right imagine you have road that has lots of traffic goes that way uh, you have a small street here which has traffic lights these traffic lights are there to ensure that people who are coming from the small road to the main road still have the chance to actually join the main road the, the main busy road however they don't want to actually stop the traffic because of the small road here because it's not 
always having uh, cars that want to actually join the main road. What companies are doing who are building new roads is they're putting um, sensors. So as soon as the car drives over the sensor, there's a similar way, like if I hover over with uh, on the text box. So my mouse cursor, let's pretend my mouse cursor is the car that drives okay, from the small road to the traffic lights. So as soon as it reaches to the traffic lights, it stops. The traffic light is red, then it turns orange, then it turns green, and the, tr the car can join the main road now. And then straight away goes to red and then stays red forever until a new car goes over again and triggers the timer again. So it goes back over to trigger the timer and then once it triggers the timer goes to orange and then goes to green for a few seconds until the person drives again, joins the main road and then the traffic light again goes back to red forever until... Uh, again, so another car joins and then triggers the timer. This video allowed you to learn how to apply events into uh, by using Visual Basic into a project. However, it also enabled you to understand how real-life projects work by using events. So, hence the fact that Visual Basic is a powerful programming language. Hope you've learned something new today. Thank you for watching.